sweet little Jesus boy. We didn't know who you were. Friends, we sing those words around the time of Christmas. It's a beautiful song about the gift of the Christ child, but also how that Christ child ultimately is met by the violence of a people who don't listen and don't truly want to know who he is or what God is doing in Sweet little Jesus, boy, we didn't know who you were. That's also, in a very real way, the way that those who have been judged and found wanting respond in this judgment of the nations, which is when Jesus is at the very end of his ministry, at the culmination of his ministry, and knows that he has but hours left with his disciples. He tells this story. And those found wanting say, we didn't know it was you. If we'd known Jesus, we would have done more. You see, friends, in our world, so much pushes us to care for ourselves and care for our family and care for those around us, our friends, our church family, like us, the, the, the tendency towards family and tribe and community is strong. But Jesus looks at that and finds it wanting. Jesus reaches the culmination of his ministry and lets out a word of judgment against that. Those goatly ones say, well, Jesus, if we had only known it was you, if we had only known it was you who were hungry or thirsty or need, in need of clothing or shelter or justice, we would have done something. If you'd just spoken up and let us know that it was you, we would have. But Jesus tells those, those of us, who raise that, those words, that when you didn't do it, for the least of these my children, you didn't do it for me. Friends, I have long found those to be some of the most troubling words in all of Scripture. Because I know that too often I've cared only for my own and only for myself and only for those of you right around me. And when it's come to the hurt of others, I've said I couldn't do it. That's beyond the ability that I have to care. And so I've turned my back and turned my attention inward. And in this moment, Jesus has strong words for me, for all of us who would do that sort of thing. It turns out Jesus has not come among us to tell us to care only for ourselves. Jesus has not come among us to say that if the best that can be said of someone is, is that they, they care greatly for their family, that that's enough. No, we shouldn't be surprised that Jesus, the Messiah, who came into this world to save all people, in turn, cares about all the people that he died to save. This passage in Matthew, friends, scares me. It, it stands out so much in the Gospels, in the Epistles, is about how God's grace is a gift that cannot be earned. And that's good news because I know I cannot earn it. But here in this text, in these final teachings of Jesus, it seems to matter tremendously what we do and how we live our lives. 
And that is a challenge that we need to hear today. Friends, we hear in this world all sorts of calls from people who aren't always like us. And in them, we really do need to hear that Christ is among those raising those calls for help, for justice, for mercy. And when we withhold our aid, our, our justice, our mercy, our voice to help others, we might eventually hear Jesus saying, when you did not speak up for me, when you did not speak up for that, for those others, you did not speak up for me. Friends, we are in a troubled time these days. I know it's a troubled time and it's one that I worry about. But friends, I think we need to hear in the words lifted up in our community, words that are very much like the words that Jesus did speak and would speak and is speaking to us now. The just cry that black lives matter, that children of God too long ignored and too long pushed to the side, quite intentionally so in our society, matter a great deal. Friends, I think we need to hear in the words, I can't breathe, a call just like that in Matthew. We can imagine Jesus saying, I couldn't breathe, and you gave me no air. Go. And we need to be haunted by that. Friends, um, this past Wednesday, I, with a number of other local clergy, answered the call of our, our interim police chief to come downtown to the police station and march together as one people to the 1898 memorial. And at that memorial, words were spoken and prayers were said. And the thing I, I really think needs to be lifted out are the words and the prayers of, of two African-American clergy, one a police chaplain, one a city councilman, who spoke of this moment and acknowledged that the pain is not only about what was the horrific murder of George Floyd, who is a child of God and whose uh, death we must mourn and for whose life we must work. But it's about much more than that. That the words I can't breathe are spoken by people not only in mourning for one specific act, that they are about people speaking up after lifetimes lived, when suspicion is cast upon them, when Police are called because they walked in an area where someone else thought they didn't belong. Where confrontations with law enforcement or, in the case of Ahmed Aubrey, vigilantes, racist, often end in tragedy. I can't breathe speaks to a collective experience, and if that experience is not ours, and it's not, I think we do need to listen. Because God's children are crying out, I can't breathe. Just as Jesus cried out, I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked and I was sick, and you did nothing. God's children are crying out, I can't breathe. Or God's children are crying out, I'm in a neighborhood just going about my daily life and I can't find shelter from suspicion leading to violence. Friends, if we hear such words and we, like the goats in that judgment of the nations, 
just reply, that's not us, that's not our people, I don't know what that is. They probably got themselves in that position of being hungry or thirsty or without clothing. That's not my responsibility. If we continue to say that that's not my responsibility, we might find ourselves looking at Christ, our Lord and Savior, gathered with those chanting, I can't breathe. And see our risen Christ chanting it just as loudly. For it turns out that God has come among us in might and power to redeem our world. That God has come among us in might and power to turn over those portions of the world that hurt God's children and instead is working to bring life. Friends, I know that this is a troubling time, and I feel for those who are in the thick of it. I feel for the many good people who are in law enforcement, many of whom I walked with this past Wednesday in this town, who are committed to, to justice and work for the good of their community every single day. I feel for for those people who feel like they are caught between a rock and a hard place, who want to do good in our world, who have answered the call because they want to protect and serve our community. But we as a people need to make sure that they and we all are protecting and serving all of our community, not only the interests of a few. And, and I feel for those uh, business owners who, who poured their lives work into their business and the violence in their communities and, and the, the rioting has torn apart what they've worked for and I feel for them. I know that there are lives that are hurt in these horrible situations. But the realization that among law enforcement there are many good people seeking to answer good callings. And the realization that in the disorder there are real people being really hurt cannot be used as a bludgeon to silence the very real word that there are children of God in our world who are hurting. Who, the, who are the subjects of violence and hatred, who are held in suspicion and not given opportunity, and when they need the breath of life, that very breath is denied them in so many ways. Friends, that there, there are things that can be true at the same time. And we need, as a society, to be working for justice for all people. But our special attention right now does need to be on the areas where injustice has been most sharp and most repeated and most ignored by society at large. The violence directed against people of color, our African American sisters and brothers in particular, as they're going about their daily lives has to stop and has to stop now. Friends, Jesus came among us, and there is good news. Even in this story, this parable, the judgment of the nations, there is good news. Because even as Jesus is calling out those who did not hear and did not listen and would not understand and said it's other people's problems, they probably got themselves into this position. It's their own fault. Even as some of us are saying that, Jesus is still there with us, and Jesus is still teaching us, and Jesus is still calling us to live into a better way. The Christ, who was the sweet little Jesus boy, who we didn't know who you were. The Christ, who upon the cross struggled to breathe, and cried out, cried out to God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Friends, I believe that that Christ is now with too many of his children crying out, I can't breathe. And when we hear that, when we hear those words of pain, when we hear those words of horror, I hope, I pray, that we might with them hear the words of children of God. Among them is Christ our Lord and Savior calling out to us to do something for children of God who amidst the oppression and the violence and the suspicion and the prejudice and the hatred and the vigilantism and the intimidation cry out, I can't breathe. And if we see all of that and do nothing and later respond, sweet little Jesus, I didn't know who you were. We, indeed, have gotten ourselves in a lot of trouble. For Christ has come among us. Christ has told us who he is and who he is for. Christ died for all of us. And therefore, we need to love and care for all of us. Friends, Christ called out. I can't breathe. What will our answer be? I hope, I pray, that we might be surrounded and moved by God's Holy Spirit into action, into speaking up, into working for justice, into living, lifting our voice for others who have too long been silenced. So that when Christ calls out, I couldn't breathe. He might look even at us and say, but you gave me air to breathe. You gave me justice. You gave me relief from violence and harassment and threat. You gave me hope. And for that, I could breathe. I could live. Friends, Christ is calling out to us this day in the voices of our neighbor. Will we listen? Will we respond? I hope, I pray, that we all have the grace to listen and go and move in God's world as children of God. Thanks be to God.